On today's episode of R&D Licious, I'm taking this spiralizer, this tornado maker, and I'm gonna try and apply it to what it's normally intended for, which is potatoes, but I'm also gonna try and spiralize a few other things, like eggplant or apple, to make a tornado eggplant parm or a tornado apple pie. I don't know where this is gonna go. I get things with one intended use and I try and use it for more intentions. Let, let's get on with it, shall we? First thing we're gonna do is the classic version. I'm gonna take a potato, we're gonna spiralize it. The whole idea is if you've ever used a real spiralizer before, you put any type of circular object on it, you run it through, it creates a spiral. Here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna take this wooden skewer, I'm gonna puncture it through this Yukon Gold potato. I'm trying not to puncture my hand simultaneously, okay? Basically goes through this little circle and there's another circle at the end and some teeth that I could use to hold the potato in place. So now basically what I gotta do is just turn like so. We're gonna go through, it's starting to spiralize, it's holding on to the skewer as it spiralizes, things are happening, magic is forming. Comes off, we'll leave a little tip, okay? Push this all the way to the top and then proceed to unravel it while pulling it down. This. The initial intent is for this. This is the initial intent to make spiralized potatoes. But I look at stuff like that and I think to myself, in theory, anything that is the same size and or shape of a potato will give me the same effect, right? That is the intention of this series, r and Delicious. Trying to go on a journey to create incredible things like this. Look at that. Doesn't that even already look awesome? I think so. Now, because I want to make this as delicious as possible, I'm going to submerge this in some cold water to release the starches while the oil heats up. That way it's going to come out super terrific crispy. Plus, I want to do this again and make at least two more of these versions. We're not even at the fun part yet, okay? We're going to take this to a place of dessert and dinner, not just uh, an appetizer or a side in this case. How exciting is this process? Actually, it's not only exciting, but it's kind of therapeutic at the same time. Now, I know that the eggplant's gonna work. I'm pretty sure that the eggplant's gonna work, no doubt. But the apple, that's where it might throw me for a loop because obviously the apple's got a core, right? So each piece of tornado. Art. You see ingredients, I see art supplies. Before adding this to the deep fryer, I'm gonna try and get some of the water off. As you guys know, water and oil, they don't mix. You know what else doesn't mix? Even more than water and oil? Water and hot oil, that is a no-no. And I'm gonna try and get some of the water off by doing this move. I'm trying to minimize the spontaneous combustion. You'll see what I mean when we add these to the deep fryer. Wait, I just wanna say, every time I deep fry something, there's a, there's a slight bit of anxiousness that comes over me. And if you guys don't know this, back in 2010, we were in New York City and nearly blew up Brooklyn trying to deep fry a grilled cheese sandwich this big. Pretty violent, huh? But uh, you know what they say, through the most violent things comes the most delicious things. Shout out to Steve Ranella and Meteor Podcast. Looking pretty good. We're gonna take these out, we're gonna hit them with some salt because what is a potato without salt? Useless. Got a... Uh... Nice thing of ketchup here, which obviously is kind of useless. I should have just sprayed the ketchup all over it, but let's go in for that bite, okay? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah! It's not like it's different than a french fry. It's just different enough to where the allure of this situation makes you like it more. This is not efficient at all. Okay, round two on this journey. This one's a little bit more ambitious, certainly. I got these little mini adorably cute eggplants that I'm gonna treat exactly the same way. All right, cut the stem off that, cut, cut the tip off of that. Let's go for it. Friggin' working like a charm. Definitely a lot looser, and that's because there's seeds on the inside of the eggplant. So we've kind of reached a point where we have to think a little further and a little longer because obviously that's what's happening. My fix on it is to use a thicker skewer and hopefully this one, it's a lot tighter. So I'm, I'm thinking it's gonna be good. Okay, so far so good. Fingers crossed, I'm being very gentle. It's not working, but whatever, we're gonna keep it moving, keep it grooving, and see what happens. Same thing is going down. And I fear, guys, it might be S-O-L, which if you don't know what that means, it means shit out of luck. So what can I do to kind of keep that going? Well, in a situation like this, where I'm trying to get you guys to a place, okay, I'm trying to make eggplant parm spiralized situation, but the spiralizer and the eggplant aren't getting along, it's time to go manual and also increase the girth of the wooden skewer. So I have even thicker ones. I got these big boys right over here. Big gauge, not sure what. And we're gonna try another eggplant. And instead, I'm gonna show you guys how to spiralize using your knife and simulate the blade that's actually on the spiralizer. So I'm gonna slice like this and then just keep it turning, right? Kind of like on an angle. And basically the wooden skewer is preventing me from cutting all the way through the eggplant. All right, slightly smaller but pretty cool if I had to say so myself. Yep, that worked. So although it's not as pretty as the potatoes, it's still spiralized and it still looks cool as fuck. Now, in order to make this eggplant parm, we gotta parmify it. So I have some egg wash, some seasoned flour, and some seasoned Italian breadcrumbs. We're gonna do a little dredging situation and pop it in the deep fryer. This gets tossed in the flour mixture. Now it goes in the egg wash. Now it gets tossed in our Italian breadcrumb and Parmesan cheese. Now we're gonna deep fry these and see what's good. Two, and three. Ideally, I want to take the eggplant parm out of the air, out of the deep fryer and use the residual heat to melt the cheese. So I'm gonna go and get slices of mozzarella to put on top of this and hopefully it'll melt inside and seep through the nooks and crannies. Hopefully that will help the residual heat melt it. We'll check back to that in uh, right about now. What do you do with camera magic, you know? Editing, you do it in post. What if I put it in the oven on broil? Or, or torched it? Oh, that's torch, yeah. Jeff, you fucking pyro. We're good with this. I have some marinara over here that we have from one of our other episodes. So let's just give it a try, I suppose. This is definitely worthwhile. Look at all that crispiness over there. The eggplant is buttery and creamy on the inside, which is exactly what you want from eggplant parm. Dinner's done. Let's make dessert. Another journey, not sure where we're gonna end up. Apple pie spiral. Tornado apple pie. Apple pie on a stick. No, that doesn't even do it justice. Tornado apple pie on a stick. There's something there. Okay, last but not least, of course, dessert, something we all love, unless you're a psychopath. 
I'm making apple pie, but unlike any apple pie you've ever seen. Not sure it's gonna work, especially because there's a core in the apple, lots of seeds. So maybe we might have to use a little ingenuity or dare I say, kitchenuity. Ingenuity in the kitchen. We're gonna try this, uh, what is this? A crispy delicious or something? What are they called again? Honey crisp, there you go. So far so good. So far so good, Jeff. Oh my God, it's working perfectly. Didn't even care. Didn't even care about the core. Plus we have enough friction to make it happen or do we, you know, you see that it's already happening. I'm getting no, it's not playing fair, but that's okay because as I saw with the eggplant, oh, you know what's happening? All the seeds are popping out, which is amazing. Now we can just eat this thing straight up and not have to worry about dying from cyanide. Because if you didn't know, apple seeds have cyanide in it and cyanide is poison. Ideally, the coating mixture will make it stick to the stick. But right now, if I turn it upside down vertically, it's all gonna collapse on one another. So in an effort to make sure that it doesn't happen, I'm just gonna lay it down right over here. This time we'll use a green apple. I like eating apple pies with green apples. What about you, Jeff? You an apple pie with a green apple type of guy? Uh, I'm just a pro apple pie person. You're pro any apple pie. Yeah. You're just down with apple pie. You're just like, America, give it to me. <laughs> I'm gonna make uh, like a batter, okay? We're gonna combine some flour, baking powder, sugar, and salt. Now we're gonna mix this entire thing together. Combine some buttermilk. Now, just like the eggplant, I'm gonna add some AP flour to another dredging station. I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of cinnamon as well. Start with the first one, toss it in. Oh, we gotta cut, we gotta cut it. It's way too big. All right, just do that a little bit. All right, well that, way much of a fail. So basically what's happening here, guys, is gravity is getting in the way. But maybe, just maybe, I could, I could pull this off. It might be a tad janky. I'm just gonna like toss these right into the deep fryer. I don't know what's gonna happen. I hope it's gonna work. Okay, now while that's going, I gotta act fast because we need to hit this with some cinnamon sugar afterwards. So as that's going and getting crispy and before I flip it, I'm gonna add some sugar and some cinnamon in this other dredging station and then toss that as soon as it comes up. Uh-oh. Definitely cool, whatever that is. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe less spiraled, but definitely fried apple. All right, that's as, as crisp as it's gonna get. I'm not sure if this is a success or a failure. It looks really cool. I'm gonna toss it in the cinnamon sugar mixture and then put it aside. Less of a tornado apple and more of like a weird apple pie on a stick. I'm kind of not mad at it. it. It looks appetizing. Now we'll go in for the next one and really hope for the best here. For my most ambitious creation in the spiralized journey, when I tried for a spiralized apple pie, again, because of the seeds in the core of the apple, there's no friction, at least not enough for it to hold up vertically, but it is holding up horizontally. It looks awesome, it smells awesome. Mm. I mean, cinnamon and sugar, fried dough, you can literally put that on anything and it'll taste awesome, which is why this tastes awesome. Less pretty, of course, but equally as effective. 
Well, the journey through research and development, AKA R&D-licious has concluded. I went out and wanted to make a potato spiral tornado situation. I wanted to make an eggplant parm spiral tornado situation. And then I wanted to make an apple pie spiral tornado situation. And in some regards, we achieved all three of those to a certain extent. The potato one, which is what the spiralizer was intended for, was a banger. The eggplant parm version, the spiralizer didn't like, and that's because there was too much air and seeds on the center and not enough to hold the eggplant in place. So I had to go manual on that, but I wanted to achieve the spiral, which I did. That looks insane. And unfortunately the apple one didn't work. It was the most ambitious. And although it's delicious, how can it not be? It's not sticking on the stick. I would call this a successful r and delicious. I learned a lot of things along the way. And that is what I try to do when coming up with recipes. I like doing what something is intended for and then taking it to a place using my brain to make it something someone's never seen before. But again, if there's anything you guys wanna see me go on a journey through r and delicious, if there's an item that you wanna see me use, if there's a food you wanna see me modify, then leave a comment down below. Remember to like this video, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you want to become a recipe champion in your own home, head over to recipechampions.com for all my published recipes. You can learn how to make crazy things like Fruity Pebbles cheesecakes or even an Eggs Benedict burrito. Go check it out and learn how to turn yourself into a recipe champion.